Good morning. Good morning, Pastor Snell. Good morning, Dr. Taylor. Good to yeah, see you, my friend. Hey, man. Good to see you, too. And good morning, unrealistic family. We are developing a strong bond. 50 days for us to be together. And yeah. we're in day 49. Yeah. Yes, waiting on Pentecost. Man. And, and even these 29 days have gone by so so quickly, man. It, it feels yeah. like we just got started. And so we're excited um, that there is still, I mean, I'm just blessed to know that there's an appetite for prayer, that there is still an appetite and a hunger for the word of God. Jesus asked the question, uh, when he comes, will there still be faith in the earth? I, I, I think God is still going to have a remnant uh, that you know, is going to believe until the day that he comes. And so I'm excited uh, to be on this journey with our Oakwood and Breath of Life community. Yes, yes. We are the remnant with enmity. There's <laughs> <laughs> an enmity. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes. yes, sir. Well, let, let's pray, Pastor. Uh, dear Lord, we want to thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on this way, uh, starting us on our way. Bless those who are in with us in this session and those who will be uh, later. And Lord, we thank you and love you and praise you for all you've done. Bless us as we converse about you. Amen. 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 Hey, preacher, we, we got a couple of announcements before we get started here. Uh, we You can still purchase your book, uh, even if you have not. And you can e share this book with someone, too, uh, in our OUC store in person or Amazon or uh, Breath of Life uh, at uh, Breath of Life TV. Uh, dot TV, or you can even pull up the code that you see right here using your phone and and get yeah. a book for yourself or someone else. Uh, our T-shirts um, in our store, we will have more in by the end of this week. So if you want to come in person, you can definitely get you a T-shirt then, or you can either go to Breath of Life and uh, secure your T-shirt. I think you'll love it. Uh, if you're still participating with us in the Daniel Fast, which is a great opportunity for you to experience some uh, some time with God in terms of how you fast and eat and, and feast on his word. Uh, these are some things you can do, which is great. And uh, please, guys, reminder, share this by text, email, yeah. social media, family, friends, co-workers, any and everybody you can think of, and even people you don't even know, because it will be a blessing. And your prayer requests, please place them in the chat. We have our prayer team who comes back and looks at each and every prayer request and makes a petition to God. And then please send in a one minute video testimony so that we can post your one minute testimony. Uh, and we thank you for that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, hey, man, I think I'm feeling good. I don't know about you. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, my friend. Yeah. We, we might as well rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, yes, yes. When I woke up this morning, I'm in my right mind. But you know what? I, 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 I'm I, really enjoying that Take Me Back segment. When we play our music before we start, I'm yes. feeling it, man. When that Hammond organ kicks in, that then they yeah. lean into it and take me back. <laughs> it, does, it does exactly that. It takes you back a little bit. It yeah. does. It does. It does. It does, man. It takes me back. Um, and, you know, we're in day 29 and we are talking about unrealistic experiences in our workplace. And mm -hmm. uh, I think this is like real important because uh, some of us have a workspace problem or yep. we have workspace questions where yep. we can kind of figure out how we can bring tie in our unrealistic faith in the mm -hmm. workplace. And, you know, preacher, uh, what what is a key for unrealistic things to happen? in our workspace. Yeah, and and and, and I want to just kind of really begin cuz I think this is this is a critical conversation. Yes. Um and again, I know there are a number of us that are watching that are retirees, but I know that there are a number of us that are still working uh for others or that there are a number of entrepreneurs who are working for themselves. And and see one of the things that I, I believe is that because the lion's share of your day is actually going to be spent at work so so that you know the primary place of your witness is going to be at work so mm -hmm. it, it is very critical for us to have unrealistic experiences in our work setting because and we'll talk about it later i believe your unrealistic experiences in work 
they create an amazing open door for you to witness and to tell the story of Jesus Christ in settings that the gospel of Jesus would not normally be able to travel. So like there are some who are missionaries, they go overseas. There are some that are missionaries that go by plane. But I need somebody to realize that you are an office space missionary, that you are a that you are a uh, a, a missionary where you minister and serve each and every day. And that's why I think it's very critical that we have unrealistic expectations that we see God open up doors at work. So as you ask the question about us, um, you know, being able to have unrealistic things happen to us at work. Mm -hmm. One of the things I want to just say to somebody is you got to understand, and please hear me on this, is that God is in every detail of your life. Wow. I, yes. I want somebody to understand fundamentally, like, because see, there are some of us that are saying, man, can't doesn't really happen where I work. You know, mm -hmm. maybe I just clean or maybe I just do office work or maybe you know, I'm working, you know, with my hands in this capacity, or, you know, maybe I'm at the, you know, kind of bottom of the professional tier. Mm -hmm. I want to remind you that the Bible says, do not despise the days of small beginnings. Mm -hmm. Because I, one of the things I believe about God is that God is an efficient savior. Mm -hmm. He does not he doesn't waste your time. Yeah. He doesn't waste your energy. We said earlier, God doesn't waste your hurt. And I need mm -hmm. you to know that everything that you go through, this has just been my life's experience. Maybe everybody can, can speak to this. Every placement of life was preparation. So that when I was pastoring in Little Mississippi, that was preparation. Yeah. Yes. When I was pastoring in Lexington, Kentucky, that was preparation. Like yeah. when I was pastoring across the street and some of the experiences, not just good, but even the hard experiences. <laughs> help me over ghost. Like uh -huh. I couldn't, I couldn't praise God for them when I was going through them. But I, I, yes. is there anybody on the line that would not trade in even some of the disappointments and hard things and hard lessons in life? Because all of those things were preparation. And so like one of the things I want to do as we talk about like unrealistic work experiences, I want to use our Bible reference character, the character of Joseph. Because mm -hmm. like when you look at Joseph's story, it revolved around primarily like we don't really know much about Joseph's wife or his children. Mm -hmm. But like what we see about Joseph is that he had to work in a hostile work environment where there was hostility toward him because of his race. There was hostility toward him because of his beliefs. There was hostility because he had these unbending convictions that really caused him hardship because he didn't just go along to get along. Yes. But like one of the things I want to say, even if you're in a workplace that you don't like, it just feels unfair that you wound up in this particular work situation. I need you to know that God has a purpose even there. So that if I can just give you a couple of Bible verses, like going to the end of Joseph's experience in Egypt, like yes. when his brothers come to see him, like remember he has suffered ultimate betrayal yes. at the hands of his brothers. Like these brothers like faked his death and <laughs> sold him into slavery in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And so of course we must know like the story. Like he goes in, works with Potiphar, gets falsely accused, goes to jail. God uses his gifts in the jail. Then ultimately he is elevated to prime minister. But then remember how this thing works out so that like his brothers send him into Egypt. But then mm -hmm. God uses his prophetic gifts um, so that when the king sees this dream of seven fat cows and seven lean cows, mm -hmm. he kind of communicates that Egypt is going to have seven like abundant years uh, of, of harvest, but then it's going to be followed by seven lean years. So you got to make sure that we manage the abundant years yes. in a way that allows us to manage and survive the lean years. So mm -hmm. during the lean years, the brother that they sent to Egypt that's the one that they've got to come and borrow grain from. Let me, yes. let me just say to somebody who is being harmed by an enemy, I need you Ooh. to know, just be still, and God will that's make it. your enemies your footstool. So that's guess it. what? When brothers come, Joseph kind of plays with him a little bit, but he eventually reveals himself. 
Now, yes. I haven't lost my point. I know it feels like I'm rambling, but he reveals mm -hmm. himself. Preach it. So when he reveals himself, these dudes is like, oh, snap. Like, I yes. mean, they are expecting the worst. But remember what Joseph says in Genesis 45 and verse 8. Yes. He says, but now do not be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here for mm -hmm. God sent me before you to preserve life. Yes. In other words, Joseph is like, you sold me. That was your mm -hmm. intent. But mm -hmm. God sent me. You, you meant it for evil, mm -hmm. but God reweaved it and used it for my good. Mm -hmm. And see, I need you to know, friends of mine, that even though it feels like there is nothing to be gained in your position, it mm -hmm. feels like there's nothing to be learned in that particular job. It feels like you're spinning your wheels in that for a professional location. I need you to know that Joseph probably felt the same way when he's cleaning toilets in Potiphar's house. Yes. He probably feels the same way when he is serving food in Potiphar's house. Yes. But I need understand that this is not the job that he applied for. Do you realize mm -hmm. that Joseph's <laughs> dream was that yes. the sun, moon, and stars was going to bow down to him? That's right. That's right. So what, what he dreamed was that these large barley loaves, they were going to bow down and yield to him. Mm -hmm. Like what he dreamed was a dream of leadership. But guess what? In his real life experience, all he had was bond servantship. Yes. But see, one of the things I need somebody to understand is that God is so efficient that God trained him for leadership yes. by teaching him how to serve. Amen. So, so I need somebody to know is that God trains you for your vision in unconventional mm. ways. Yes. So, so like, uh, uh, Malcolm, mm. you remember the movie The Karate Kid? Yeah. You remember the Karate Kid? So he went to, to Mr. Miyagi because he wanted to learn karate. He wanted to learn how to fight. He wanted yeah. to learn how to like, you know, bring it to his enemies and the bullies. So yeah. you realize how he trained him for karate. He trained him by making him do menial tasks. Mm -hmm. he, he taught him how to sweep, you know what I'm saying, yeah. the floor every day. He, he taught your boy Daniel how to wax on and how to wax <laughs> off. And it's crazy because like eventually he got to this place of frustration. He was tired of sweeping and he was tired of waxing on and waxing off and, and doing these other little tasks. And so what yes. Mr. Miyagi did was he charged at him. And it's crazy because all of those reflexes that were developed mm -hmm. by wax on and wax on kicked into space. Like yes. all of the muscles he developed by sweeping repeatedly, they began to show up in a way that he could not have comprehended. And mm -hmm. what I'm saying to somebody today, that there is a reason you are where you are, Amen. that God is honing some skills in you, that mm. God is developing some patience, that God is teaching you how to how you want to be treated so mm -hmm. that when you are in a position of authority, you know how to treat people yes. who are where you currently used to minister and serve. Mm. And so what I want somebody to understand fundamentally is that God is not wasting your time, that, that there is preparation in where you are. And, yes. and see, if you want to have unrealistic experiences at work, it requires this type of faith. Because remember 20, Proverbs 22 and, and verse uh, number nine, the Bible says, if you see a man who excels in his work, the mm -hmm. Bible says he will stand before kings. He will not serve before obscure men. Yes. And so like one of the things the Bible says is that you've got to be diligent in your work. Mm -hmm. Now see, is where faith kicks in. Yes. See, it takes faith to be diligent in a task when you can't see what the reward is going to be. Mm. Mm. See, see, it takes diligent faith to be diligent when you feel like nobody's seeing. Mm -hmm. It requires faith to be diligent when it seems like you're not going to be recognized. Mm -hmm. It takes faith to remain diligent when it seems like there is not going to be an earthly re re reward for your yeah. activity. Yeah. But I need us to understand that there is this larger principle at work that yeah. you see in Matthew 25, where Jesus says, he that is faithful in a few things. Yes. That's the one I'm going to allow to be a steward or a ruler or an overseer of many things. So that the person that, that's given that one talent in the parable that just sits on it, Yes. And just say, I'm going to wait till they give me some more. 
I'm going to wait till, till he gives me some more to, before I show my full effort. Even what he has is taken away. But, yes. but the one who takes five and makes full proof of the five, the one that takes the little two and, mm -hmm. and, and just goes in hard with the two, yes. what God does is he multiplies what they have. Mm -hmm. And see, there's somebody that's, that's wanting more. There's somebody mm -hmm. that's wanting this door to open. But I mm -hmm. need you to know that the God who sees in secret is evaluating you yeah. with what you have. He said, like, yeah. I can't trust you with more. Like if, if you're slacking in what you have, if, mm -hmm. if you're not diligent where you are, yes. I, it would be a mal, spiritual malpractice mm. for me to, you to be steward over more if you are indifferent in the responsibility that I've mm. already given you. Yes. And see, there's some of us that, see, the problem is, you know, there's some of us who say, Pastor, your problem is you're always trying to spiritualize. No, your problem mm. is that you don't have spiritual eyes. Thank in you. other words, you, you only look with the eyes of yes. flesh, but yes. you can't see that God has ordered your steps yes. and that there is purpose in your current assignment, that mm. there is providence at work in your current placement. And this yes. is the thing I want to say to somebody. You, you just never know who's watching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is we only perk up when, when the boss shows up. Mm -hmm. we, we only want to be diligent when the supervisor comes around. But mm -hmm. I need you to understand, you never know when there may be a butcher and, and a baker that, that, that's in the same position that you're in, yes. but they see how you go about your work. But mm -hmm. one day, like Joseph, they may be in a position of influence and they're mm -hmm. like, man, I, I know a man of God. Yes. I know a woman of God who when yes. you're in and there was nothing to be gained, they mm. were still going hard when there seemed to be no earthly reward or pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Wow. And so that's why I want to communicate to somebody today that yes. it just seemed like there was no, there was no incentive for mm -hmm. Joseph to be excellent in Potiphar's house. There was wow. no incentive for him mm -hmm. to go hard like that when he was in jail, but mm -hmm. he understood that God, you're always auditioning for God, that God is always looking and paying attention. Oh man, oh man, preacher, that was so pregnant with thought because what I heard from that is it's less words, more action mm -hmm. while I'm in my waiting period. Uh, yeah. uh, silence and yeah. action. And yeah. action. Yeah, because yeah, that's what Joseph did for, for that whole period of his waiting period. He didn't complain, silence, right. mm -hmm. <laughs> but he had action. And it's yeah. what people see us do in that. Man, thank you for that preaching. And, and you know how the word says, faith without works is dead. Yeah. So, so there's some of us, we just believing for the promotion. We just yeah. believing for the new position. We're mm -hmm. just believing for you know this door to open. I need us to understand that like, no, your belief is going to be revealed in mm -hmm. your diligence where mm -hmm. you are. And yes. I need you to know one of the things I have seen, and I'm not the oldest cat in the world, is just that people like doors, open doors, find diligent people. Yes. Opportunities track down faithful people. Mm -hmm. I, I need you to understand that gifts and resources, like, I mean, let me just say this, this faithfulness is a magnet for opportunity. Yes. Faithfulness is a magnet for open doors. Mm -hmm. Like, 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 you know, it, 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 you know, it, it repels the indifferent, like, you know, uh, you know, open doors run away from, from the slothful. Like if yeah. you are about that, like where you are, I need, see, you ever wonder why certain people seem to get all the breaks, why yes. certain things happen to, happen to always happen right for certain people. It, it is not just because like, man, they just have this strong belief system. There is a diligence that is the result of a belief. That says, mm -hmm. if I'm diligent here, more opportunities and more open doors are going to come my way. Well, that diligence, you know, sometimes for me, sometimes for the listeners, I want to rush this thing. So do I have to get involved in office politics, a little bit of mess here, a little bit, so I can just make this thing work? This diligence yeah. you're talking about. <laughs> if, if I can throw something out there, man, and y'all do a hashtag for me on this. One of the things about unrealistic faith is that unrealistic faith doesn't take any shortcuts. Yeah, it is. And getting involved in office politics 
it see all of that is just trying to get a so in other words providence is going to take me a long time mm -hmm. but if i kind of politic and grease my way there i can kind of create a shortcut that gets me there a little bit quicker and so when we talk about shortcuts and office politics let me be clear that you ought to be friendly you ought mm -hmm. to show yourself kind you ought to be a helpful person but when we talk about man all office politics I need you to know that as a believer, you ain't got to tear somebody else down mm -hmm. in order to be elevated. I need you to know that you ain't got to throw shade at them in order to shine. In fact, I want to really steer you away from this whole like very, very worldly approach to work where I scratch their back so that they can scratch mine. I mm -hmm. grease their palms so that they can grease mine where I feel like I've got to join this fraternity or this sorority in order to have professional advancement somewhere down the line. I yeah. need somebody to like understand what Proverbs 18 and verse six says. The Bible says a man's gifts will mm -hmm. make room for him and they will bring him before great men. And mm. in other words, friends of mine, I need y'all to understand that the Bible says that promotion does not come from the East or from the West, but the Bible literally says that promotion cometh from the Lord. In fact, one of the things I need somebody to understand is that you can't even give yourself favor with people. It yeah. is the blessing of God. I can't even explain this, that somehow God at times just gives me favor with people that mm -hmm. I didn't even curry favor with. That's right. And see, the reason you want God to elevate you, the reason you want God to give you mm -hmm. favor, the reason mm -hmm. you want God to open doors is because when people elevate you mm -hmm. and people open the doors and people feel like you've done it for them, done it for you, what happens is you then become indebted to them. That's it. In other words, they've done this favor for you, but guess what? They hooked you up. But I need you to know that comes with strings attached. It it, it's going to come with a receipt and an expectation that mm -hmm. at some point you're going to compromise principle in mm -hmm. order to pay back the loan that That's they right. gave you when they did it for you. But I, I, I want to be one of those folk that when God elevates, that mm -hmm. when God moves, when God opens the door, that the only debt that I have is to give the glory and give Ooh. the honor and give the <laughs> praise and That's give it. the worship and uh -huh. give the adulation to the God that opens mm -hmm. up doors that mm -hmm. no man can shut. Is there mm -hmm. anybody on the line that when God does it, you don't want man to be able to take the credit? You, you don't right. want your husband to be able to say, I recommended you. You don't mm. want no coworker to be able to say, man, I'm the one that did it. You want to just be able to say, I stayed in the stream of providence and I was yeah. willing to wait on the Lord. And you have this professional boast that if it had not been for the Lord, that's it who was on my side. And mm -hmm. so I'm, clear, friends of mine, I'm not saying that you stand in the corner and you stiff arm everybody at work and you're cold yeah. and you're indifferent. In fact, the Bible says he who has friends must show himself friendly. In fact, yes. when God gives you favor through kindness, you maximize it and leverage it correctly. Because even the Bible says about Jesus that God gave him, he grew in wisdom and in stature yeah. and in favor with God and with men. But understand, don't sabotage your favor by being unkind. Don't mm. sabotage your favor by yeah. being indifferent. Don't mm -hmm. sabotage the favor by lacking compassion when there are people hurting in your sphere of influence. But at the same time, what I need somebody to understand is that when you are diligent in your work and you maximize your gifts, I need you to know that you don't have to become dependent upon man. Listen, people, yeah. listen, I do not subscribe to this idea that it's not about what you know. It's about who you know. I, yeah. I agree. With that. Let me take that back. It is about who you know, but not here on earth. That's it. That's it, about preacher. Who you know in heaven, Amen. that's who is going to make the difference in your life. Mm -hmm. I see the reason, uh, and I know I'm, I'm kind of rambling, it, it, that you no. want to focus it on your gifts that's and it. on your, your work ethic. Because, see, if relationships get you there, 
then mm -hmm. guess what? Relationships can remove you from there. Yes. But see, when a person is diligent, yes, and a person is vigilant, mm -hmm. see what happens is a believer makes themselves indispensable. Mm -hmm. In other words, like you when when you function with excellence in your workplace, in your office, at that plant, on the arsenal, at that hospital, when you are that good at what you do, yeah, no matter who does not like you, mm -hmm. they can't remove you because you've made yourself essential. <laughs> let, let me mm -hmm. say it again. Wow. You yes. gotta be so diligent that you make yourself essential. Do you mm -hmm. realize mind? Like when you look at the narrative of Genesis, it actually looks like, man, after a while, like the Egyptians like Joseph. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that they don't, they don't, they ain't got no love for this Hebrew? Yeah. Like the Egyptians, Malcolm, they do not like Joseph. One, because mm -hmm. he is Hebrew in terms of mm -hmm. his um ethnicity. Yes. And they hate him because he believes differently than than the foreign um or the 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 the, the pagan belief system in Egypt. That's true. Yeah. In other words, they don't love him. They tolerate him. Yes, he's an so outsider. Why do they tolerate him? Because he has made himself so essential through yes. his professional excellence that they cannot get rid of him. That's how, it. How do we know they never loved Joseph? Why? Because what did they do as soon as Joseph died? Yes. As soon as Joseph died, guess what? He they turned died. right around and put all of Joseph's descendants in slavery. Exactly. They never saw Joseph as one yeah. of their own. But your boy mm -hmm. Joseph, man, had an understanding of science and yes. season and mm -hmm. economy. He had this prophetic awareness that was just so special that the pharaohs and the, the entities of the time, they couldn't put their finger on it. They couldn't yeah. quite describe it, but they mm -hmm. just knew that somehow the Lord was with him. Mm -hmm. And because the Lord was with him, the wicked wind up getting blessed because of the presence of the righteous. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is when you're excellent in your work, guess what? They ain't got to like you. That's it. <laughs> guess what? They, they get rid of you yes. because God uses you in yes. a way that if they move you out, they, they cut off their own nose. They Just bring like harm to themselves whenever yes. they mess with a man or woman of God that's been assigned to a particular task. Oh, man. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, you're firing some people up. So then what you are empowering us with, you know, how does unrealistic faith, this witness to work? I mean, how does that work? Yo, so like one of the things I want to just say, and this thing I want to, I want to talk about, I'm going to espouse the principle of excellence. Yes. Because this is the thing I want somebody to get is that excellence unto itself is a witness. Mm -hmm. So Genesis 39 and verse three, like, so you realize that your boy Potiphar, he don't have no point of reference for God. He, mm -hmm. he doesn't know who Jehovah is. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, this is not his belief system, but I love how, when the Bible talks about how Joseph went about his work, the Bible mm -hmm. says that his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did prosper in his hand. Yes. Do you realize, like, okay, your boy, like, you know, Potiphar has this pagan belief system where he believes a little bit in Chemosh and Ashtoreth yes. and, and, and Dagon and all these different, you know, he has this composite belief system. But he just notices that, man, when Joseph polishes the silver, it mm -hmm. has a different kind of shine. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. When, when Joseph bakes the cake, it's just got a different kick or flavor to it. Like yeah, when, when Joseph cleans the bathroom, y'all yeah. work with me out in yeah. church. Yeah. When he cleans the bathroom, it just has a different type of cleanliness to it. Like mm -hmm. in other words, like the excellence, the way things turned out, it didn't just speak to Joseph but yeah. it actually communicated spiritual agency mm. that said there's something about Joseph's God that provides something that Dagon and Chemosh yes, and Baal and Ashtoreth, that just don't show up in the work mm. yes. of those who believe in that way. Yes. And, and so I need us to understand that excellence has this unseen agency to it, so much so that you remember when the Queen of Sheba 
came to mm -hmm. visit your boy Solomon and she just yeah. saw how organized it was and how orderly it was and there was harmony and there was hospitality like man it gave you know an opportunity uh for her to be able to notice something about solomon's god yeah. and so the one thing i need somebody to understand about excellence is that excellence man it, it is such a powerful thing that it never goes into a slump mm. what do you mean by that? in other words it does not slump based on who's watching so i'm excellent whether the boss is watching or whether the boss is it. Your excellence isn't bipolar. It's not up today and it's not down tomorrow. Uh, excellence is not temperamental or moody. It doesn't shift based on, man, I'm having a day or I'm having a week or it's Monday morning. No, those who function with excellence early on Monday morning tomorrow, you walk up in this joint, mm -hmm. you like, this is the day yes. that the Lord has made. I'm going to mm -hmm. give my best possible effort because yeah. I realize that the consistency of excellence, you realize Colossians yeah. says, whatsoever your hands find to do, yes. do it with all your oh. might yes. as if you're working for God and not mm -hmm. for man. Mm -hmm. And see, I need you to understand that like when you do it with excellence, man, and, and the work you do at the computer thrives. The mm -hmm. work you do cleaning thrives. The house you build thrives. Yes. The, the electrical work that you do, it never messes up. The air mm -hmm. conditioning work that you put in place, it does not malfunction. Yes. It's just because I need you to know because folk are always watching. They notice mm -hmm. that you know, John's work, man, it, it's never breaking down. Or, mm -hmm. or whenever she oversees the document, it ain't got no errors in it. Um, yes. Whenever that person pours concrete, it's always level. It's never yes. uneven. Yes. I need you to understand that excellence creates an opportunity and mm -hmm. open door for you to be able to tell the story of Jesus Christ yes. in venues and in ways that it normally would not be able to be told. Oh, man. Amen. Amen. And, you know, like what you said about Sheba and what she said, what I see is better, mm. than even better than what I heard. So like, better than what I heard. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So the, so the boss is like, the ethic that I see is even better than what I heard. <laughs> better than what I heard. That's it. All right. All right. Well, with that, man, <laughs> does everyone have a calling then? And then how do they discover this calling? Man, so so this is critical because see, one of the things, so 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 even when we talk about this excellence and approaching life this way, mm -hmm. I think one of the, the, the critical components of it is 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 coming to an understanding about what your calling is. Yes. So when we hear the word calling, we automatically think preacher, pastor, uh, somebody that functions with a prophetic office, because mm -hmm. that's the way that we see it kind of demonstrated in the scripture. But I need everybody to understand that everyone who is born of a woman, I need you to get that your life is not just the result of biological process. Mm -hmm. Your life is a part of an eternal construct wow. that when you find your karmic call calling, it helps harmonize the plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. And when you don't get into your calling, it actually disrupts the flow of providence. Mm -hmm. That's how significant your life is. I mm -hmm. need you to know that your life was, before you were born, you were assigned a calling. And so I need you to understand, like, how many of us know that to be a teacher is a calling, mm. that to serve food with love is a calling? Listen, I, I mean, I, I'm in the hospitals a lot, but I'm there to pray and mm. lead. But to mm -hmm. work with sick people for a living, it is a calling, my friends. Yeah. And so the thing that I want to encourage maybe those who are younger, uh, who are watching, is as far as possible, you want your, your career to be kind of based off of a calling. Now, mm -hmm. now everybody, it doesn't work that way. Some people's work is simply going to be the means by which they facilitate their ultimate calling. Yes. So it, it doesn't always overlap that way. But I think when your calling and your career become the same, that's when you have unrealistic experiences. That's mm -hmm. when the lid or the plateau professionally is removed. There is no glass ceiling on the person who is walking in a divine calling, whether they work for others or whether they work for themselves. And so mm -hmm. one of the things I want to encourage for the 18, 19, 25-year-old who's watching, 
See, the problem is some of us chose a career, but we never said, Lord, what are you calling me to do? What did mm -hmm. you create me to do? In other words, like one of the ways I believe you discover your calling, like if you're not going to always have a burning bush like Moses, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you may not always have a vision or a dream like Joseph, but mm -hmm. I do believe that there's somewhat of a scientific way to do it. Like, I mean, I think your, your gifts point you in the direction of your calling. Mm -hmm. Like your passions point you in the direction of your calling. Um, mm -hmm. I, I tell people all the time, you'll know your calling or you'll find it at the intersection of your gifts, your talents, your passion, and your pain. Yes. Where, where those things intersect, that's where you will be able to find or identify your calling. So, so like when you read John chapter four, and, and this mm -hmm. is how you know your calling to a certain extent. There would be times when they would be like, man, Jesus would be like so on fire. Like he would mm -hmm. just be moving from one assignment to the next. They yeah. literally try to press him to be like, yo, Jesus, you need to take the time to get something to eat. And mm -hmm. Jesus would be like, yo, I've got a food or a meat that you don't know of. Yeah. And so the Bible said, the disciples were like, well, man, did somebody feed him? We were yeah. not looking. And, and Jesus would be like, dude, y'all thinking earthly food. Yes. And he says, the reason I ain't hungry is my food is to do the will of him who sent me. Yes. In other words, what Jesus is saying is that my assignment feeds me. Mm -hmm. My assignment replenishes me. Mm -hmm. Doing my work fulfills me. It mm -hmm. completes me. It yeah. revives me. It does yeah. not weary me. And see, friends of mine, when you find your God-given calling, like not mm -hmm. to say you won't ever get tired or you won't need a vacation or take the Sabbath. You need to do that. But I mm -hmm. need you to understand that when you when you are in your calling, your yeah. work itself feeds you. It revives mm -hmm. you. It replenishes mm -hmm. you. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. you know, your calling is your calling is, is if you would do it for free. Now, I'm putting this on the Internet, but don't don't tell South Central Conference what I'm about. to say. <laughs> South Central fired me tomorrow. Yes. Listen, I tell them that. I don't want them to know this. <laughs> I want to be clear yeah. on this. Um, <laughs> I want to be clear that because my calling is to, to preach the gospel, yes. it is to make Jesus known through the preaching of the gospel. I need mm -hmm. you to know that even if they fired me, I, I would do it even if there was no paycheck coming. Like, I don't, wow. I don't want them to know this, but listen, listen, yeah. I would find a street corner. I'd be yeah. on that job with my Bible and I so would find cool. some type of venue. Yes. To be able to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Are Amen. you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. And so what I'm saying to us, beloved, like, man, like real teachers will teach without a school. Mm -hmm. They have the gift of healing. Like, even if they, they hadn't passed their nursing boards yet, they're still finding a venue or a way to, to be a person of help, to be a ministering yes. agent to somebody. Yes. Like, I need yes. you to understand that your calling is not. It is not validated when you get a position. When mm -hmm. you function in that calling, the position simply follows or affirms the fact that you're already on that particular path. And yeah. so I want to just encourage somebody to say, all right, start asking that question, even if you're 30, mm -hmm. 40, 50. Lord, mm -hmm. what have you called me to do? And yes. where you can align the career with the calling, that's yes. when like Joseph or mm -hmm. like Daniel, or the three Hebrew men, or mm -hmm. whether it was others that worked in hostile work scenarios, that's when yeah. you begin to see unrealistic expectations where God opens doors that no man can shut, where mm -hmm. you serve before kings and not mm -hmm. obscure men. The mm -hmm. most critical component is understanding your calling. Let, let me be clear. There are other things mm -hmm. I like to do, but yes. I have not been called to do. Like, yes. Uh, Malcolm, I like to sing. Yes. Because I, <laughs> I have a big call to sing. Amen. Like, there are other things that I like to do, but that's not. So in other words, anything else I just like to do, there's a lid on it. Yes. I can only go so far because that, even if it makes me comfortable, but there mm -hmm. is no lid. There is no cap. There mm -hmm. is no plateau in, in what you can do or be in the assignment that God mm -hmm. has given you. And I want yeah. you to know that you've been given an assignment. There's a reason you see the world the way you do. Yeah. There's a reason you process the word uh, thought the way you do. There's a reason that 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 there's some of us 
like, you know, it's crazy. Like my parents, like my dad and my brother, it's like, man, I'm the black sheep of the men. Like these guys, they love to fix stuff. They love uh -huh. to put stuff together. Like, man, I mean, and, 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 and like they've been given gifts in that area. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Like Christmas uh, day comes, like they'll buy stuff for the kids. And as soon as like, it's one of those toys that has a bunch of, of screws and, and bolts and it's pulled out of bag. Like, oh, Instruction. Like, I'm getting weak. But like they all fired up for that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and, and they live lives and their work, you know, of taking things apart and putting things together. Like it feeds them to do that. See, like that, yeah. that, man, it, it weakens me to have to do some of that stuff. Like, I mean, like, man, to put the bicycle yeah. together or the basketball goal, I'm just like, oh, yeah. Lord. And, yeah. you know, and you do what you have to do. But, yeah. you know, for me, there are different things that revive me. So my yeah. brother's in the IT world. His ministry at his church is to is to oversee the IT. And, and his ministry is just as critical as his pastor, just yeah. like our IT team. In other words, like if without my IT team, who's working behind yeah. the scenes right now, That's those right. who are hearing the gospel can't hear it, no matter how mm. loud I shout it. Yes. In yes. my living room, there is somebody functioning in their calling behind the camera that mm -hmm. allows the gospel to go to the thousands who are listening to it right now. Yes. And so what I'm saying to us, friends of mine, is embrace the call. Don't mm -hmm. covet somebody else's gift. Don't mm -hmm. just look what looks fun on paper. Embrace who and what God has called you to be. Mm, 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 preacher. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, you know, this thing is it's so, so, you know, God has moved this session. Uh, man, our, our time has has been winding fast because of the yeah. things that you're saying. So sometimes you got to call an audible when uh when 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 your time gets and and the Holy Spirit has been pouring into you so much and is pouring out in this session right here. Can we just get a prayer from you, preacher? There's people that are putting things in the chat about their jobs, their personal life, trying to figure out their calling, uh, uh and and just trying to hear God's voice so that they can operate within His will. So, yeah. preacher, can you pray for us with that? Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we come before you boldly today because that's the way you invite us to come. And Lord, I'm just praying for all of those who are still in, in a work context, whether they work for others or whether they work for themselves. Father, what I want to pray today is that like Joseph, like, like Daniel, like the Nehemiahs, Lord, we're praying that we would have unrealistic experiences in our work. I first pray that you would help us to work with an excellence that is not moody. Help us to work with an excellence that is not contingent upon who is watching. Help us to, to find that whatever we set our hands to do, that we do it with all of our might as if we are working for you and not for man. Help yeah. us to work even in our earthly context in a way that allows us to hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. And Father, I'm praying that as we adopt this principle of excellence and diligence, I'm praying that as we walk with business integrity and non-negotiable principle, I'm praying that you would bless your people in their workspaces like you bless Joseph, Daniel. I pray that you would do what you said in the book of Proverbs, that if we're diligent, that you would bring us before kings and people of authority that we would be able to not just be glorified, but that we would be able to allow the gospel to travel in a portable way that allows our witness to be able to expand. And so, Lord, I want to pray, first of all, for that person who is looking for work. Mm. Father, I pray that you would open up your hand and that you would make provision this week for mm -hmm. that person or for that person that some of our members are praying for. You're praying for a son or a daughter or a spouse to be able to find the correct job. Lord, I pray that you would open up doors for employment. And then, Lord, my prayer for somebody today is that they would be able to see providence where they are. Maybe the tasks are not ideal. Maybe the coworkers are not ideal. Maybe the work environment is less than ideal. But, Lord, may they see this season as preparation. Lord, may they sense that you are up to something, that you are developing portions of their character that need to be developed before you, they can be placed where you ultimately have them to go. So, Lord, may they be content. May they find joy when they go into work tomorrow. May they be able to be excited about the task that is at hand. 
And Father, I'm praying for somebody that they would experience supernatural provision. Lord, I'm praying that those who are being good stewards of the finances that they have, that, that they would experience increases in their wages. Lord, mm. I pray that somebody would have an increase in their work status. And Lord, I'm praying that for your workplace missionaries, that they would not do it unto themselves, but that they would do it unto your glory, that they would be a witness in your kingdom, that they would work with those underneath them with compassion, and that they would be liberal and generous and giving to your work so that your gospel can go to the four corners of the world. And so, Lord, yeah. I'm just praying specifically a prayer that you would bless us in our workplace scenarios. Then, yeah. Lord, I want to pray lastly that you would help us to be diligent in the principle of Sabbath. Yeah. Help us to realize that we don't have to get ahead by working ourselves to death that we don't have to get ahead by transgressing your law. But Lord, help us from the setting of the sun on, on, on the sixth day to the setting of the sun uh, at the end of the seventh day. Help yeah. us to learn how to be still. Help us to learn how to rest. Help us, Lord, to be renewed in you and to know, Lord, that you will take care of everything else that pertaineth unto us. So mm -hmm. Lord, would you please bless your keep people? Would you keep them? Help them to know that promotion does not come from the east or the west, but yes. promotion comes from you. We pray these things in the blessed name of Jesus, our Lord. Let God's people say together, amen and amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, unrealistic family, you need to put your tray tables in their proper place and your seat in this position because this plane <laughs> is landed. <laughs> it's the landed, it's landed, it's landed. <laughs> the Holy Spirit picked us up and took us somewhere this morning. And I want to thank you for that, preacher. Uh, our time has now come to an end. Uh, uh, we, we've got this thing going, guys, until May 1st. May right, 1st. Pastor? May 1st. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So we are unrealistic, guys. And uh, please join us Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. to get yep. your morning blessing. And then Saturday and Sunday at 8 a.m. We are with you guys, our unrealistic family, until May 1st. 50 days. Uh, mm -hmm. Pentecost. Uh, we had a testimonial video, but for sake of time, we'll we'll uh, let it be on our our um, our outpost. Is that okay, Pastor? Or should we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. no, no. So yeah. So if I can just mention a couple things, and then we'll play that testimony video because we overcome by the word of the Lord, uh, by blood, lamb, the word of our, word of our testimony. But one thing I want to just say as we as you look into your work this week, I want to mm -hmm. encourage somebody because see, this is what the devil is wanting to do to us. Uh, we've gone past the 21 days and he wants your thinking to go back to its normal default settings. We all have default settings in our thinking. So I don't want you to go back to your normal way of thinking, your normal way of praying. As it relates to your work, pray some unrealistic prayers. Like some of us, God has already given some unrealistic vision for your work. Like, see, it's like Joseph, like Joseph's dreams seem completely unrealistic, so much so that they were mocked. And, and the thing I want to say, and I know our time is up, uh, Elder, but just let me just oh, squeeze this in. Do you realize that when Joseph is serving in Potiphar's house or when Joseph is in the prison, mm -hmm. it looked like his vision was a lie? Mm -hmm. Reality said that vision was a lie, that that was a hallucination. But I need you to know that when, when reality conflicts the vision, mm -hmm. the, the vision is not a lie. It just mm -hmm. means the reality is temporary. It, it just means the vision has not come to pass yet. So I need you to know that that's why, that's why Habakkuk says that in the end, the vision is going to speak and mm -hmm. it will not lie. So yes. do not yield to the realistic default settings of your thinking. Embrace what it is that God has put in your heart and in your mind. And mm -hmm. then I just want to encourage us, uh, stay with us. You know, we're going to be Monday through Friday at six. And then I want to encourage you, like those of you who've been reaching out, uh, emailing, if you need the book, you need the book. If you have that elder tele, can you put that up? Um, yes. You, if, Especially a number of you have been looking for uh, groups uh, for your, your prayer group, your prayer ministry, your women's group, your men's group. Go to breathoflife.tv. If you're trying to get like, you know, get them in volume, it's a little less expensive than it is on Amazon.com. 
But if you want to, you know, look at ordering in groups, groups of 10, 12, 15, whatever it is for your church, go to breathoflife.tv. You'll be able to get it that way. Or if you're trying to get it individually and you need to get it quickly, you need to get it quickly, go to amazon.com and you can get it in, in that way. Uh, and again, we're encouraging you to get one for yourself, bless somebody else with it. And where we're really trying to kind of move this, get this movement. Is, is getting this book into the hands of young people, teenagers, yeah. young adults. So they start thinking faith. They don't wait till they're 40 or 50, but they start That's thinking it. that way when they're 13, 14, 18, 21. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Clear understanding. Thank you, preacher. Um, so uh, uh, we can close it out there. Close it out with the testimony. Yes, the testimony oh. video. Yeah. Good morning. My name is J. Robin Langley, and I'd like to share my unrealistic faith journey um, when I heard the Lord tell me that I needed to go ahead and sign up and follow this 21-day um, uh, faith walk uh, I was all in and then I understood about the found out about the fast and that wasn't a problem until I saw that I needed to to fast from caffeine and caffeine isn't something I am addicted to in the physical sense, but certainly um, I um, am socially addicted to it, but I also use it to manage my ADHD and my concussion syndrome. Um, and so I said to the Lord, okay, I can do the food and all of that, but um, you know, I've got to have my, my triple soy cappuccino in the morning for my focus, you know, so I can focus throughout my day. And I heard him say, I'm the God who created you, including your brain that needs to focus. Don't worry. And so I um, heard the first couple of days and I said, OK, I'm just going to trust you, Lord. I'm just going to go with this. And I want you to know that today is day 23 or 24 and I have not had a Starbucks. And I just want to say now unto him who is able to keep you from Starbucks and to keep your mind focused because little becomes much when we place it with unrealistic faith in his hands. I'm so grateful and I thank you for this journey. I hope someone can be blessed by this because the Lord cares about the little things and as much as he does some of the bigger things. Amen. <laughs> That's an awesome personal testimony. Now I hear him. Amen. He's able to keep you from Starbucks. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's he can <laughs> That's that's what we're talking about. Get unrealistic. <laughs> get, get unrealistic. Now <laughs> unto him. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. Well, we appreciate you this morning, Pastor. We appreciate that testimonial video. And again, like Pastor Snell said, join us, guys, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m., Saturday and Sunday at 8 a.m. And uh, just join your family. Tell your other family members who may not even be blood family. This is a family, an unrealistic yeah. family. And uh, Pentecost is falling daily. Amen. That, that Amen. latter rain. So let's pray to close things out. Lord, we want to thank you so much for all you've done. Thank you for the words that you have given to Pastor Snell this morning that has blessed so many. So, Lord, let us take the unction of the Holy Spirit and move forward in unrealistic faith. Keep us until we meet again. Save us when you come. Amen. Amen. Share this word with somebody. Share it with somebody. God bless. Yes. yes. Bye bye.